in in recommending stuff to schools, are you also giving them access to like uh, uh, SCT measures of need support and things like that, so you can actually see an effect? Um, well, so so one of the things that we're doing in schools uh, through the Let Grow organization is introducing play and adventure opportunities into the schools. Mm -hmm. So w one of the programs, so the one that I was most instrumental in developing is called, by the schools called Play Club. So we've begun to call mm -hmm. it that too. And what it is, is an hour of free play at the school, all grades combined. So in mm -hmm. elementary schools, it's kindergarten through fifth grade, all playing together Mm -hmm. uh, using as much of the school as possible, the outdoor playground, the gymnasium, the hallways between there, oftentimes other rooms as well, where there are games set up and art supplies they can play with. They can play in any way they want. Mm -hmm. And all the kids in the school are invited to play. Now, this, this started before COVID. It went on yeah. for a few years before COVID. It got disrupted by COVID. It's restart, restarted in a number of schools. It's been extremely successful in all the schools, as far as we're aware, that have tried it. Mm -hmm. And it, But it doesn't uh, occur during the school day. It occurs oh. either before school or after school. We haven't yeah. found any schools willing to give up an hour of the school <laughs> yeah. day for this. Yeah, yeah. Right? So it's either before school or after school. So it's only kids who, either, who can get there before school or after school. Mm -hmm. but, but large numbers of kids come. They all want to come. And the rule in play club, and at first I was worried that teachers wouldn't be able to follow, but teachers who <laughs> monitor play club are told that, while play club is going on, you're not a teacher. Mm. You're uh, think of yourself as like a lifeguard on an ocean beach. You're there to mm -hmm. save a life. You're not there to worry about whether people are happy or not, whether somebody's mm -hmm. teasing somebody else or not, whether you're not worried about skin knees. That's just below your pay grade. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. that's you're you're not you're not there to settle little quarrels. The whole point of play is for children to learn how to manage themselves, how to solve their own problems, how to. Mm -hmm. And so you're there just to let them do that unless you think there's a real emergency. And then mm -hmm. unless it looks like somebody's going to die within the next few seconds, count to 10 before you intervene and see if the kids themselves don't solve the problem. The teachers themselves, I hear from them, are amazed that they almost never have to intervene. There's no mm -hmm. rules at Play Club other than don't hurt anybody. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, don't deliberately hurt anybody. The, an implicit rule that usually doesn't have to be state, stated is don't break anything important. And, and you ha do have to stay on the school grounds and school right. building. You can't go off campus. Sometimes it seems to be necessary to add a rule, no cell phones, just because there are some mm. kids who seem to be so attached to their cell phone that they aren't quite ready to try actual pl play with other kids. So I think mm -hmm. that's a reasonable rule where it seems to be necessary. Most kids very quickly learn, I don't want to be on my cell phone when I'm out yeah. there with all these great kids playing. The age mixed aspect of it is a big part of it. Part of my mm -hmm. own research has been on the value of age mixed play. And one of the reasons the teachers never have to intervene is the older kids really, you know, like right. the 10 and 11 year olds, they'll solve the quarrels that occur among the little kids. They look out for the little kids. And that's mm -hmm. so much more valuable, both for the both for the older kids and the younger kids, that they're empowered when this happens. And so, so this is one thing we've been doing. We've right now, in terms of effects of this, we've got a, a systematic experimental study going on in the state of New Hampshire, sponsored mm -hmm. by the state, paid for by the state, uh, in which some schools have play clubs, some don't. And mm -hmm. uh, we're taking various measures to look at how the school had atmosphere changes, how, uh, what happens to the mental health of the kids in the schools when they have play club compared to when they don't, what happens to teachers' attitudes about the kids, mm -hmm. and even things like, does this loosen up the way things happen in the classroom just by having this sort of more playful attitude that mm -hmm. everybody develops as a result of being involved in play clubs. So that's one promising thing that we've got going on. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible 
is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Burr.